Okay, hey guys, I'm Levi Garrett. Today we're gonna show you how to build your own spark plug wires. Because every time you try to get a set for anything, you have to build your own. So, got your kit. When you pull it out of the box, it's gonna be about four feet longer than it needs to be. So you just have to cut its length to crimp your ends on. Now, the one that they give you for the coil, they've already taken the courtesy of doing it for you. Which is pretty nifty on their part. Simply because it shows you how it ought to be. So, if you slide that rubber back, you can take a look at it and see how it's been crimped just like that and theirs is all pretty and round and has right here it's all inside there nice and deep like now when you do it yours is probably not going to look that great it's going to look kind of squarish and screwed up because you don't have a nifty tool to do it you just have a pair of pliers don't matter it's going to hold either way if you're worried about it you can take your pliers and do what they call a 10 pound pull test. And if it comes off, redo it. If it doesn't, everything's good. So, in order to start out, you take your new piece that's four feet too long. You go from your distributor cap to where the plug is going to be. Now I'll show you here. Let's see, like on this one, it's very important to know your firing order. So this one is gonna be one, three, four, two. Now on a straight inline engine, one is always at the front and whatever number you have, whether it's four or eight or 12 or whatever, it's gonna be at the back. So if you're not sure which way your distributor spins, after you pop the cap off, you'll see the rotor sitting there and all you have to do is have a buddy or your little sister or whatever, someone you trust, just bump the starter over so you can watch that coil, or that rotor, sorry, and see which direction it spins. It'll either spin clockwise or counterclockwise. This one spins counterclockwise. I'll just go ahead and show you real quick. can see it. It's all you have to do. Just enough to see which way it goes. So, you put your coil or your distributor cap back on. It's very important. Inside here, there's a little tab. That little tab, it lines up on the distributor. And that way, you can ensure that it's going to be lined up. Okay. Okay. So, just take this piece, and the piece that goes on your spark plug is already connected. That's how they come out of the box, thank God, because those would be a pain. So, since we're going on our firing order, we're going to do three next. So, you just click that on there, it doesn't even have to go on fully, just enough to get an idea how long your spark plug wire wants to be. And if you're worried about it being too long, well, you can always trim some off. If you're worried about it being too short, make it a little longer. Not a big deal. Just get an idea where it ought to be and go from there. Okay, so once you have your idea where it ought to be, just take your bare pliers. That's all it takes. Now, since these are stripping, you can do it one of two ways. You can either put your little 
rubber piece on before you splice it or strip it or not, doesn't matter. If you're gonna do it that way, I take a little bit of panther piss and just put it on there. That way these things actually slide. Because if you don't, they stick, rubber on rubber, friction, you know what I'm talking about. You will hate your life. Put a little of that on there, just slides on there nice and easy. Now once you got it on there, just take your strippers, go down, however far, it doesn't really matter, half inch or so. Now you just want to be very careful, just strip the outside. Pull it off, and while it's sticking out, is a little diode. That little bugger, you just fold it over to the back, and if it doesn't really want to lay down very much, you can strip more off, you don't have to, doesn't matter. Once you do, just take your metal cap, You just slide it over. You just put it in to where that rubber piece is just to the top of where it's going to crimp over and hold it. That's all it has to be. And when you do this, this is kind of a poor shot. Make sure you put that little diode to the back. Because if you put it to the front, you're going to have a hard time holding it. So you put it to the back, that way it's yeah, I'm sure secure. Bear with me. I'd like to see the plant that does this. Take your pliers. Kind of a bastard getting everything held with one hand so you can crimp it. And it doesn't really matter how you crimp it, you just want it to hold. So if you get it all done, it looks like Frankenstein and Swamp Monster had a baby child, don't matter long as it holds on there. Like I say, if you're worried about it, take your pliers, just do a pull test. If it slips off, that's why you tested it. If, you leave, if it stays on, great, perfect. So, you slide that rubber back down on there, and you want it sticking out just enough so that when you plug it in, this rubber actually has to slide down. And that'll ensure that it actually stays on the distributor cap. If you go too far and you just push it on there, try to start it, it's not making connection, it's missing whatever, you're gonna be like, well, that's crap. I just put new wires on it. Well, it's gonna cause you grief. So, come back down here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You just slide it in there, it fully clicks. And you'll just slide that rubber down. Just like that. Get this looped up, plug it in over there, and boom. All right, guys. I know this has been like a really crap video. But it's my first one, never done this before. So you know, I'll just hold it. Anyway, if you like the video, great. Uh, and if you don't, you know, let me know what you think I could do better. Uh, put it down in the comments, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.